Hi, let's talk about custom shapes, which are probably going to be your favourite shape layers in Photoshop. That's because they're so easy to use. Here's how you work with them. Click and hold in your toolbox to enable this tool. Alternatively, you can hit U to select this category of tools, then shift U to cycle through them. As you can see, the active tool changes as I constantly tap that hotkey. When you want to add a new layer, you don't just click or start dragging on the canvas like this was any other tool. Instead, you focus on the options bar first. This is an essential step because from this drop down, you have to select what you're about to create. By default, this list isn't going to be that big, but let's use this arrow. My advice is you click and drag, and as you do that, always hold Shift. And that's because you never know their original aspect ratio. Instead of guessing, your best bet is to use Shift. This is why I advise you to avoid clicking and inputting values manually. Sure, it can work, but most of the time you're going to end up with shapes that look like this, and that's because you have no idea what sort of values you need to write in. Nevertheless, we have an arrow on our screen, but that's not that exciting. Let's explore this gallery and see what else we can use. This panel can be resized if you go to any of its corners and look for this symbol. Drag it out because you'll need all that extra space in a second. OK, go to the top right and click on this tiny gear icon. This will reveal a long list of options. Similar to the Layers panel, you can customise your thumbnail size. If you're brave or clairvoyant, you can use the text only setting. If you do that, you'll have to rely on the description, which doesn't always tell you the whole story. My advice to you is stick to small or large thumbnails. The big ones are very useful because they allow you to see all sorts of tiny details. This particular set doesn't feature intricate custom shapes, but as you're about to see, that doesn't mean they're all going to look like this. Underneath is where you can load up additional packs. I'll click on arrows and this pop-up is going to show up asking me if I want to replace the current set or append. Initially I was confused by that term, but all that means is you'll add these new shapes to your existing library. And in most cases that's what you'll want to do. And here they are. My advice is you click again and from this list choose the first one, which is all. This time I'll choose to replace my existing library, otherwise I'll end up with duplicates and now you have loads of custom shapes to choose from. The thing is, even these aren't that great, and if you add them to your canvas, you'll see they're mediocre. But we have the whole internet at our fingertips, so let's get some better looking ones. My go-to site is shapesforfree.com. This has a fairly large collection of custom shapes that are much more interesting to look at. You can use these without fearing your design is going to look like you've used clip art from Microsoft Word 97. I have my eye set on this heart pack, so let me download it. You'll get an archive, and inside it you'll find a file with a .csh extension. You can remember it as custom shape, csh. Photoshop should recognise it immediately. This means you can double click it and Photoshop will automatically come to the foreground. For whatever reason, it won't tell you what just happened. That's something Adobe hasn't addressed in all these years, but if you click on this drop down, you'll see that the new set has been added. Now you can place them on your canvas and play around with them. You'll see they look much better than the ones that come pre-installed in Photoshop. That particular site hasn't been updated in a while, but it still has a fairly generous amount of custom shapes. Remember, the great thing is these are vectors, so you can scale them as much as you want. In case you can't double-click that CSH file, just drag and drop it into Photoshop and it should load without a problem. Check the library because you won't get a notice, either an error or a success message. Finally, if that option fails as well for whatever reason, go to the gear icon yet again. Hit load shapes and you'll be prompted to look for .csh files. Lastly, I want to remind you that all custom shapes can be adjusted through the direct selection tool. That means I can zoom in on this heart and drag out a selection that will allow me to pick up this part. Now I can move it in any other position, or better yet, I can duplicate it with Ctrl J. Now I'm free to select any individual anchor point from this path and create a new shape from it. In the next lecture, we'll talk about how you can create your own custom shapes, so stay tuned. I'll see you in a minute.